Now we're going to bring in text into our Caption Maker application for timing. First, we start off with a regular text file made in Notepad or any of your favorite word processor application. Then we go to File, Import, select Word Processor. From the drop-down list, select ASCII Text. Hit Browse, select your text file. Hit Next. Then we're going to select under the import format, Freeform, because it contains no time code whatsoever. Under the import options, we're going to select each row made out of two lines of text for pop-on, and a row with end of sentence punctuation, and a row with comma or semicolon if applicable. We also suggest to select the maximum number of characters for each line of text to 26. You can go up to 32, but select 26 for the best look. Select Finish. You can see that Caption Maker splits up your text into separate captions for you to go ahead in time. Now I'm going to show you how to import video into your Caption Maker application. First we go to our Preview Window panel, select the Video Control, and select Enable Video File Playback from Disk. This will enable any Windows Media Video compatible format. If you have a QuickTime video that you'd like to import, simply select this option over here. Now we browse for our AVI. Select it, hit Open, and set to temporarily set timecode reader to video playback for timing purposes. Hit Close. You will see that our video is now on our preview window and that the timecode is chasing it. Now I'm going to show you how to format your text once it's inside Caption Maker. Caption Maker has many sets of tools to ensure that your text appears correctly on the screen. The first set of tools that we would like to introduce are the up and down arrows, otherwise known as the push and pull arrows. For example, the way they work, if you want to push the last word of this caption to the next caption, you simply press the down arrow you'll see that the word appears now on the next caption. If you would like to pull the last word of the next caption up, you simply press the up arrow. So you can see that these affect specifically the last word of each caption. Next I'd like to cover the expand and contract options on each caption. These enable you, the user, to make each caption up to four lines or make a two-line caption into one line. This enables you to have a lot of flexibility depending on what's on the screen at a time. Next, we can change the positioning of each caption on the screen. There are three panels over here on the left side of the screen. They're called the horizontal, the vertical, and the justification panels. If we select each one, we can see how, by right-clicking on the mouse, they affect each caption. That is the horizontal. You can see that the options for that are left, center, and right positioning. For the vertical, we have top, center, and bottom positionings. For justification, we can left justify, or right justify. If we select left horizontal positioning, we typically should select left justification as well. If these aren't enough, or if you have a specific caption that you need to move up or down, you can simply grab the caption and move it. That gives you unsurpassed flexibility, especially when you have many lower thirds or other graphics on the screen. In addition to the basic formatting tools, there are other tools that enable you to change each individual caption. For example, if we wanted to change this particular caption to Rollup, we can do that by simply right-clicking and selecting Rollup 2. If we wanted to change the entire project to Rollup, we simply click on the top panel and it highlights the entire row and we can select paint on, 
roll up, or back to pop on. We can select four or five by dragging the mouse and right clicking. Or we can select mix and match. One that goes paint on, another one that goes roll up, another one that goes roll up three lines, so on and so forth. In addition to that, Caption Maker enables you the flexibility to underline specific text by selecting it here, pressing the underline formatting. We can italicize or do both. There is no bold available in captioning format, but what we can do is we can make a specific word blink by pressing this button over here. We can change the color to any one of these for display on your TV screen as well. Now we're ready to do the timing once we've formatted all of our text. The first thing we want to check for before we start timing this uh, captions to the video is our settings under the time code panel. First and foremost, we have to make sure that this button, the mark time code send line, is pressed in as opposed to pressed out. Next, we want to check the time code properties window. In this case, we are getting the time code directly from the video playback from Windows Media Player. In the event that we're using an external time code reader, we can select our model from this list. Once we hit apply, we hit OK, then our play button on the VTR control is chased by the time code here. Now that our settings are correct, we can begin to do the timing itself. First, we want to make sure that we're at the beginning of the video by scrubbing this tool all the way to the left. That gives us the black or the beginning of the video frame. Once we're ready to do the timing, we select the caption we'd like to start with. In this case, it's going to be this one at the top. And we press the play button. To be able to mark our end points or our start times, we want to use the plus key on our keyboard, which is found all the way to the right next to the number keypads. We press play. We wait for the narration or voiceover to come on. We press the plus sign. You'll notice that every time I press the plus key, the start time code starts over here and moves to the next caption that I'm ready to time. You do this repeatedly until you get to the very end of the script. If for some reason you make a mistake, you can select the caption that you feel is off and you notice that the actual video will start at where that caption was timed originally. We then press play and resume the timing. You'll also notice that we only see the start time code over here. We don't see the out or the stop time code. Let me show you how you can view the out as well. To customize our columns on the screen we simply go to the view visible columns and select stop time code or any other um, invisible columns that we would like to see. When we do so, we hit OK and then you can see the stop time code as well as the start. If we continue to do our timing, we see that by pressing the plus sign, the out time code is also set when we select the in time code on the next caption. Hi, my name is Jason with CPC Closed Captioning and I'd like to demonstrate a new technology of ours called Auto Timestamp. Now, when you want to close caption a video, the two ingredients that you need are a video file, which I've loaded here, and a transcript. Here I have a plain text transcript. There's no timing information. It's just the text transcript of what is spoken. And I'll import that into our caption software. When you import a plain text transcript, it gives you some options about how the text is broken up. I'm going to go with the defaults. And you'll see what it does is it breaks the text up into caption size chunks that fit on the screen. 
and there are various FCC regulations about how the captions are laid out, and the software handles all of that for you, which makes it pretty easy. But you'll notice that there's no time code information yet. In the past, to time the captions, you'd have to do something called time stamping. That's where you watch the video play in real time, and a person has to sit there and hit a key on their keyboard when each caption is supposed to come up. And it's nonlinear, so you can go back and make uh, corrections if there's any mistakes. But it's still a time-consuming process. If you have a one-hour video, it takes a person about one hour to timestamp it. Now we have a new technology called Auto Timestamp. I'll activate it by going to Time Code Auto Timestamp. And what's going to happen is the software is using a special kind of speech recognition in order to figure out at what part of the video each caption chunk is heard. And it does that very accurately because it already has the text. It doesn't have to guess what text to put. So this doesn't create a transcript for you. It simply figures out the timings for the transcript you already have. It's a very fast process. Even a one-hour video can finish very quickly. And now you'll see here that it has populated all of the time codes for, these, uh, for this caption text. And I can go ahead and click Auto Sync to play them together and uh, check the timing. Well, it is wonderful to see all of you here today, uh, to be with all of you. Uh, I want to make some special acknowledgments. So as you can see, the timing is very precise. And you'll notice there's a lower third on the video here. The captions obscure it. That's no problem. In our software, it's very easy to select some captions and move them around on the screen. That's covered in our other video tutorials. One thing I want to show is some of the captions come up with a red time code. You can see down here like this one. That means Auto Timestamp was not 100% sure about the timing of this caption. But what that allows you to do is to go through and spot check your file. If there's any sections that are in red, you can do a quick manual check to make sure they're OK. And if they're not OK, you can make a quick manual correction. So I'll go ahead and check this spot here. So I want to acknowledge uh, all of them. Uh, first of all, responsible in, in large part so you can see that actually that caption was fine. I don't have to make a correction. Uh, what this means is that with auto timestamp, instead of spending one hour to timestamp the whole file by hand, you can spend just a couple of minutes to do it automatically and clean up the results. And you'll accomplish your caption timing much faster than ever before. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.